meeting of the National Youth and Amenities Committee of the election, just for a second, has been chair of the council and presiding over here, because we will have the election of the chair of this committee shortly. Um, so, agenda members are reminded by the that council has a general duty to consider the following matters in exercise of its functions, equal opportunities, race, gender, sexual orientation, marital status, age and any disability, crime and disorder, health and safety and human rights. Okay, welcome. welcome everyone to this new meeting, uh, new committee of this year. And emergency evacuation procedure in any event of a fire alarm, fire trail or other emergencies, please exit from the room where the exit doors indicated are an assemble at the designated meeting point. Agenda number one, election of the chair of the Leisure, Youth and Amenities Committee for 2019-2020. Nomination. I second that. All in favor? Or oh, any other nominations? All in favor? Yeah. You can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 okay. So against, against, you've got support over there as well. The So, Okay. Uh, you might declare right now that Roger Aaron has been elected okay. chair of this committee. Yeah. 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 I wasn't going for it. Uh, right. Okay, <coughs> so we adjourn for submissions from the public. Um, right, who would like to start? Lever? Say something. Yeah, I think I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd just like to. Um, talk about the community festival. Um, so um, from what I saw, it was a very successful event. I attended the, um, the event on Saturday and the 
10k race and everybody that all seemed to go well and um, seemed to be well organized so congratulations to those involved <coughs> um, just a couple of issues that I think need raising um, people were directed to the Willowbrook Centre as they usually are for car parking um, and I've learned um, today um, that some people have received fines for um, <coughs> For exceeding the um, the four and a half hours over there, um, whereas it was stated by the council and the, and in a conversation with the Willowbrook Centre um, that that um, limit would be suspended on the day of the festival. It was yes. suspended. Yes. The Willowbrook Centre yes. have yes. said they are aware of the problem. They don't know why it happened, um, but mm. the individuals <coughs> just need to contact the Willowbrook Centre and they will cancel the fine. Okay, we will put that as we had a meeting with the chair of the Willowbrook Centre. Uh -huh. The thing is, on that day, who actually got the tickets? Please inform people, and we will also put that in our town council website if on that day if someone actually got a ticket. Okay, so that's that's a positive news. Is yeah, that right? so good. Okay, okay. Anyway, that's um, being clear. Okay, um, secondly, um, there was the usual um, issue of. Um, um, unthoughtful parking, um, of, <laughs> despite the fact that free parking being offered at the Willowbrook Centre, people parking <coughs> on the road here, yeah, near, near the roundabout, the yeah. Manor Farm roundabout, was yeah, really probably. shocking. People yeah. mm -hmm. on all sides parking yeah. right up to the roundabout, and it's a really unsafe situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're encouraging people to, to go to the Willowbrook Centre to park, so they have to walk over and cross that road. Mm -hmm. And it's putting them in a very dangerous situation, really, yeah. because um, it's difficult to cross the road at the best of times. And if, if visibility is constrained, you have to be edging between parked cars. It, it, it's just really yeah. uh, very dangerous. Um, so I'm just wondering if, I mean, I know it's not directly the council's problem, but if some thought can be given to uh, improving that in the future. <coughs> How <coughs> close to the roundabout was it then? Yeah. Very so close. <laughs> About yeah. as close as you could get, really. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 I have noticed over the years as well, they park, they park not just up here, all the way down. Yeah, down yeah. there as well. Probably. Yes, and I mean that is that wouldn't so be illegal as such, but I yeah. think um, parking virtually on the roundabout is well, dangerous. It is certainly dangerous, and I think. So. I think uh, next year we can actually look another partnership or support. I don't think, from how, as a person, I'm not sure what else there is we can do because we don't have any more parking permits that we can put out anywhere. Is that just a budget issue then? Well, we just have a go. Yeah, could we not borrow them from somewhere locally? Next year, for the fireworks or something, we are actually more stringent in that, we have strict instructions. People used to park on both sides of Brookery, that's a fact, but we can actually try to discourage and put people to push that to the Graves just, the, just mentioned one, that there's a 25 metre uh, bylaw, isn't there, against parking, against roundabouts. I know it's why we uh, ignored these days, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That we, would we, be we a can, discouragement. We can, what, yeah. Next year, we can actually put messages that, you know, it's, uh, to actually do that. We can note it down as it's a uh, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But on that day, people were parking even here on the road when the phones were there and when the 10K was going on, there was a car just in the middle of here. Yeah, that would be there all night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, thing. Okay, thanks for putting that. Andy? We are actually The phones are only an advisory anyway, they're yeah, not enforceable. Not enforceable. Not enforceable. Wouldn't it be worth us considering buying just a few more cones so we could come and the approaches on the roundabout yeah, and the exits on the roundabout? Yeah, we can't, it can't be cost much, can they? No, no, that's it. Oh, can I just borrow some from, say, Clean They generally house. borrow them from us, we've got most of them in this area. Right. Yeah, probably the South Coast councillors for that area uh, could probably raise up the traffic <coughs> officer at the moment because uh, within South Gloucestershire, um, currently they're actually reviewing uh, where to put yellow lines in. I know that um, when you do the consultation, it's the same cost when you do them all around an area or not. So if that is actually fed in and saying, <coughs> saying that's quite a dangerous situation, and although 
there may be some advisory lines there, people just ignore those, but heavy yellows yeah. definitely um, should be put in place. Well, because far, like you're talking about firewalls, How far are you envisaging so, or How far? Well, well, if you're more of your traffic officer, I mean, yeah. um, uh, well, Stephen's already yards, said, it's, or Stephen has already said, they were right up onto the roundabout. Yeah. If they're right up onto the roundabout, that means they're going right up onto the corners of those roads. Yeah, yeah. So, we're just all that needs to be done is some yellow lines at the appropriate distances, mm. and now is the time to do that, to actually mention that. They may not do it, but if you if you ask it to add it in, mm. because of the situation where you get really busy and it's crowded, I mean, generally people aren't going to park their car there and leave it all night, no, no. right next to the roundabout. It's in these situations where we need that sort of. And if you put cones on the road, mm. to be quite frank, that can add to the danger. People might just remove them anyway as well. Yeah, but sort of 90% are going to take notice of them, aren't they? Usually. So, yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Well, can't yeah. there be sort of like some yellow lines or like the double yellow lines where like around the corners yeah, of that's all these right. rounds. That's what Brian was saying. I've got buzzing in the ears. Yeah, I've got problems as well. At least he knows yeah. you agree. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say we have a few cones, I think about 15 cones that you're more than welcome to borrow if you need them. Oh, on the day you. we do yeah. use them. The West of England MS Therapy Centre. Oh, right. Doris. Right, item three then. To receive any apologies for actions, well, frankly, uh, couldn't yeah, come. Yeah, and I have received <coughs> from uh, Ed Rose to say that he's um, that he's not. He's not. He's not going to give it to you anyway. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry for mentioning that. I think he's confused. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Have we got any changes to that? It's on the back page. I guess that, Brian, you declaring in oh. respect of uh, gender item. Yeah, I'm a committee member, so. 10.2.1? Uh, yeah. 10.2. Yeah, 10.2.1. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lovely state, um, very good thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I know it's mine, it's so I've got to. Is it possible to bring that item well. forward? Because I know um, <coughs> the representative from Bradley State Figures has got to leave quite no, early. Sorry, Brian. Okay, okay. Yeah, what number is it? It's okay, Brian. Brian, I've made arrangements. It's fine. I don't need to leave early. You yeah. saw it out? Yeah, as long as there's no thunder and lightning, I'll be all right. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> well, we can't from the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe 100, 200 people, that's the kind of success. 
and then also joined with the Cricket Health Club as well as the skate park. Mm -hmm. So it was like there. Yeah, but the skate park issue was it was raining when I reached there, and then, so I just mm. being inside there just shelter for some time. So you didn't, the, didn't go on the skate park then, Tom? Right? You didn't go on the skate park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I allowed to, but you know, yeah, yeah. 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 he refused to wear a helmet. Yeah. 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 So it was a clear go. It's really it was yeah. much more useful. So that's uh, okay. Yes, thank you so much. Do you want to um, yeah. announce your? Nice oh, yeah, well. yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of it. Mass charity for the next year will be one is the Great Western Ambulance Air Ambulance, which is covering for the whole area. The other one is the National Autistic Society for South Coast Branch. And the third one is the NHS BT. Three. Oh, yeah, three. How much are you hoping to raise? Uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, the organ donation campaign. Uh, for this area, West of England area. So these being three three people, three charities were present at the community festival, raising some money. But, um, that's it. but Great Western Ambulance, they were raising themselves as well as, isn't it? They have a pot of, they have, isn't it, Sharon? They have a, their bucket already there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they have. They have the bucket already. Yeah, they had a stall at the Yeah, Saturday. and all, also the National Autistics Group. I have seen their bucket also there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they had that. <laughs> Yes, yes. Sorry, um, the, sorry, the yeah. uh, blood dro and organ oh, donation campaign yeah. is under the auspices of the Bristol Multi Faith Forum. Right. Yes, Elaine, you also say yeah, that. I'd like to thank Andy for doing a good job last year as chair of Even Labour. Right, okay. Thank you. Oh, and have you got the website for that last one, your charity? Because I've tried looking and I couldn't see anything. It's a campaign, it's a campaign team, so it's NHS BT, which authorised uh, NHS, which is so modified. Mm -hmm. Right, item uh, 6, the Agreed Terms of Reference Committee Brief. Yeah, I must say, um, I looked at that, and I, and the first one that out at me, is to effectively conduct the council's budgetary, financial, and preceptive responsibilities. Um, That's not so, so, all Yeah, I know, but isn't it more, isn't it more appropriate to finance only? I mean, we don't do preceptive here, do we? No, we don't. And we don't do budget, budget here, right? We did have we do. Impact. Yeah, we have an impact, yeah. Yeah, but we don't actually do budgetary control. Right? Do you think that should be still in there? I do. Is that what we're saying? That's what we be still in the budget. Yeah. Well, it says to effectively conduct the council's budget through financial and receptive responsibilities. Perhaps we should reduce the contribute to Yes. 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 That would make sense. It's the contrary. Yeah. And it's like, I guess, if measure you is raise something which would give to the precepts of process. Yes, yeah. that's all part of that. I think that's, those are good words, contribute to, I'd go along with that, I don't know what other people think. I agree with that. So change effectively conduct to... Contribute to... to yeah. That statement would have to be updated in planning, surely? Well, that's already been agreed. But then we have, like, Terms of reference that are actually. Well, that's, that's fine, that's yeah. down to each committee's terms yeah. to, to yeah. the firm to decide. Yeah, we could change that in plan, couldn't we? No problem. Next year. Next year, yeah, because yeah. they've just been agreed for well, this right year. Well, right, okay. But who agreed that it's fine? That's <laughs> actually true. Yeah. Uh, right. The rest of it's uh, straightforward and uh, quite happy. So, are we uh, all happy to accept that minor amendment? Yeah, thank you. Okay, right then. So, uh, sorry, who proposed? Um, Andy? No, Ben. Ben. Andy seconded. Uh, all those in favour? Right, okay. Right. So, do we want to bring forward 10 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, and 10.5 as we got people waiting with baby breath? I think that's a good idea, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to suppose it. Tom? Seconder? 
Are they all those in favour? Okay, so we'll bring those forward. So, so that's so, in item 10. Yeah. So 10 point <coughs> Gosh, it's the Three Brooks Nature Conservation Group. I wonder who that could be. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do a spill? Oh, um, I won't print it out because. Um, well, well, I think it's all there, and that's our report from our secretary. Um, as I think you know, we've uh, got the PATH project going ahead and that should hopefully be completed in June. It's been pushed back. Thank you very much for some money. <laughs> um, uh, we've also done some planting since this. Um, two of us did a butterfly course and an area on the tump was described as almost perfect for the grizzled skipper. So we've spent £200 since here um, buying uh, sort of specific plants for that butterfly in the hope of encouraging more. We've also bought um, kidney vetch. We used to manage an area at um, Parkway Station, which was the only place in Gloss that had the small blue butterfly. Unfortunately, it seems that since we've no longer been involved, they've all gone. So we're hoping that they might come, come over to our way, follow, follow us back to the top, but we'll see. So. Um, Otherwise, it's it's warming now. I think. Right. Can I ask about the newts? Has anyone actually seen these newts? Oh. They seem to appear, you know, on every planning application under the sun. You know, there's yes. newts around. Um, six of us have newt licences, and to keep our newt licences, we have to undertake surveys every year. Right. Um, the upper and lower newt ponds are teeming with. Protected great crested newts, right. uh, as well as palmate and, and smooth. Mm. Um, the Bozeland pond has some, but not <coughs> quite as many. Um, we also survey the Davis pond here, mm. and Hackley Way, and Dufalls. Right. And we used to do some in Patchway as well. Yeah. What's that pond called the uh, opposite Tesco? As you go in and walk into the Savages Wood. And there's a pond on the left. Is that one of yours or not? As you go actually yeah. into the wood? Yeah. That's a bomb crater. No, there's a pond there. In the wood? Yeah. And it's fenced off. <coughs> I don't know who's... who's in, in the wood or, or on those the meadow? No, it's in... It's, it's <coughs> oh, is it, you come up the path from Tesco's? Yeah, yeah. Right. Across the road. And that's the yeah. upper newt pond. That's the upper newt. That's, that's you know. So that's got newt Because, right. yeah. Oh, that's um, our best pond. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're very original in our naming. We have the upper pond, yeah, new and pond, pond, and the lower new pond. Well done, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we thought of calling them friend George, but it didn't happen. Um, I've also booked a foraging walk with um, Steve England, who is Bristol's wildlife ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we've already sold half a ticket. Um, and also a nature walk has been booked, um, which has sold less tickets, but hey, when I say sold, um, they are for free. The PATH project? Yep. I'm sure you've told me, benefit, for the benefit of me remembering, which PATH was that again? Oh, is that the one round? Don't ask me intelligent on? questions. Um, it starts from, uh, go around the back of the leisure centre, there's a, a double gate, a big yeah. gate and a six. And a yeah. little single gate. Yeah. That's going to be altered so that um, I've forgotten what the phrase is. Uh, somebody with a wheelchair, they've got a little gadget. Come on, somebody help me out here. Key pass, Stephen. Radar, is it? Radar. 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 Yeah. Radar. One of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it's going to go from there and it's going to go round Savages mm -hmm. and <coughs> come back to there, or you can leave it at the, um, the circular path. At the bottom, so it, it is going around savages mainly. Right, okay. And making it more accessible at the same time, basically. Yes, yeah. Um, to push chairs and wheelchairs. I mean, part of it on one of the back walks, we had somebody with um, a wheelchair and he went over. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Plenty stone chap in the dark. <laughs> but hey, um, 
that's one of the reasons why we really keen to, to, to improve them. Well, in view of your invaluable work, which I, I know about, and I've seen some of it, <coughs> quite happy to recommend uh, a further uh, grant for 2019 um, I don't know if anyone would like to second that. I'll second it. Oh, this appears outside now. It's only to receive them. It's only to receive, you know. Ah, it's a given. It's not like branches and then it's like a little bit. That's fine. Right, the branch is still ready. Have one report which was in your agenda pack, and then you have one report which is tabled. You have a representative from the radio here. Just to um, just go through the report really from the festival from our perspective. We had a, a very busy day, lots of volunteers uh, came to help us assist in difficult weather on the top field. This field had a very different climate to the bottom field. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was quite challenging being up here. It was about 20 degrees colder and had about 40 mile hour gusting, gusting winds at times. It was <laughs> quite, yeah, quite unpleasant. Two different um, climates. Yeah, two different was, climates, yeah. had to keep going down to the bottom field to get warm. <laughs> um, but lots of volunteers came to help. We had contacted lots of local charities before the event, done quite a lot of social media work beforehand. So we had lots of people booked in to come and see us. So we were able to um, broadcast live from the festival site, from the outside broadcast trailer, back through the studios um, on the FM frequency. Um, all the work that the charities were doing sort of all at once in one really big hit in one day and play music. We've had positive feedback from the charities mm. that, that came to us. I know the MS therapy centre with. I know Sarah was disappointed she was away that mm. day. I, 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 made, I made it later. Yeah. Made it later. Um, but yeah, so we were able to have some really good interactions with not only um, our community group of, of a radio station, because we are a community group in ourselves, uh, oh. but with lots <coughs> of other groups in the area as well. So you, you, you do get money from South Gloss and uh, the town council, and uh, you get subsidised uh, um, input to uh, provide. We, so. Yeah, we do have yeah subsidised yeah, so rent. We, we from, do support you uh, quite well then. Yeah, you, you yeah we get money from Bradford Stoke Town Council and yeah. and the rent. I think money from South Gloss that you've just mentioned is yeah. grant funding that we have to apply for. That's not guaranteed. Well, no money's guaranteed, but it's not a regular. Or a definite thing. Yeah. And uh, you get member allocated funding from some cases, don't you? In some cases, in, in some cases yeah. yeah. We, we, we ask very nicely for it. And yeah, yeah. We, we see, again, it's not guaranteed. Gather the Brian's not... obliged this year, is he? No, no, it hasn't come out yet. No, oh, right. We oh. haven't had any, any funding oh, yet this right. year. And we're still spending the money that the town council gives us. Okay. Mainly on electricity and lighting back to you. But... Yeah, boring things like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any questions? Uh, yeah. uh -huh. One of the, from my perspective, from the community festival, we've been doing, talking with the different communities, community leaders, yeah, I've had a small conversation with you. I think that's a really important thing, you are actually putting across all sections of the community and enriching. Uh, I feel you know that's a very positive sign, I welcome that, and uh, much obliged that you are actually Given that contribution. Mm. Yeah. I should apologise to you, Tom, as well, because I know that day we were interviewing a guest when you, your slot came up and someone sent you away, and then you came back a little bit later and we were That's still busy time. and we sent you away again. And it wasn't until the third time you came we were actually able to get you on air because we had a queue of, yeah, of people true. going on air yeah. from different charities. So, yes. yeah, we kept sending Tom away to come back later. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Ten stroke, three stroke, one. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a representative yeah. to speak in support of the application? Well, so do, uh, firstly, I'd like to apologise for my voice. 
<laughs> so I'll try and keep it brief. Um, this year we're applying for oxygen treatment, which is really the reason that the centre's um, here in the first place. So it's a therapy that we've been offering for um, over 35 years, and obviously ever since we've been in Bradley Stoke. And uh, I think over those 35 years we've um, had over um, 10,000 sessions, so 10,000 different bombs on seats, if you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, year on year I think it's about uh, close to over 6,000 people go in and have oxygen and it helps with a variety of the sy symptoms that they experience. So it's a, it's a management tool, it's not a cure, um, but it, they find it really helpful. Um, and as I say, you know, they wouldn't keep coming back. Some people have been coming for the 30 years that we've been um, offering treatments. So, um, yeah. Okay. The only thing I picked up on that yeah. was, um, while not wishing to see anyone in Bradley Stoke become ill, there's only 10 people from Bradley Stoke being treated in 280 something. I think, I think so, they're yeah. specifically Bradley Stoke itself, but right. we are open to... Um, to the, the wider yeah. uh, region. Yeah, I know that we've got people from Little Stoke, and so I think it was just yeah. specifically yeah. people who need our help at the moment from Bradley Stoke. But that does change week on week, and um, you know, year on year, memberships do, do grow. Like well, yeah, yeah, we do apply yeah, to it to everyone who we have members that yeah. that come to the we centre. That's who we apply to. Yeah. 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 yeah, Tom. Yeah. Because when you look into that project, 71,450, yeah, they're asking for only 500 pounds from us. So yeah, no, that's yeah. a fair deal. And, uh, well, I, I think I promised you some of my member allocated funding. I think you did. Really yeah. happy yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah, wanna, yeah. Even that, sorry, if that's, I'll be happy quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. GMS therapy, I've been around there a few times and they do an absolute marvellous job and if it wasn't there, people would struggle. So I would probably recommend it for £500. Yeah. Okay, so we have a oh, proposal and seconded. Ben seconded. All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you. unanimous. So, uh, well done. Okay. Uh, right, above and beyond. So we're currently fundraising to get some visitor chairs for the chemotherapy day unit. Um, so we've recently um, funded the chairs for the patients that are having chemotherapy and we basically want to make sure that the standard is as good for um, the people that are coming to visit them. Um, so it's quite a unpleasant treatment, um, people can start to feel really unwell, um, it can take up to nine hours each session. Um, so we often find that visitors want to sit with them the whole time, um, understandably because they need support, um, so it's important for the patient as well as the visitor um, that they can sit with them comfortably um, for nine hours if needed. Um, and as well as this, the chairs that they have at the moment, not only are there not enough chairs that want to have a few visitors each if they wanted, um, but they're quite out of date, um, they're a bit worn, um, and in general for a water look like it's not well kept or it's it, it can have a massive effect on the environment and the care that you expect to receive there um, and we just want to make sure that people can yeah sit with someone while they're having chemotherapy it's a difficult time for everyone um, and be able to support them and have as many visitors as they like really and um, we've had some really good support from trusts so far um, and from some other town councils and parish councils um, and we've so far fundraised 30 of the 40 chairs, um, and we're just looking for the last 10 chairs to be funded. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, I noticed you haven't put in any numbers for Treble. Um, you haven't put any numbers on question 7. Uh, oh, for how many people? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not oh, able right, to get yeah, exact yeah. figures for Bradley State because right, of so the patient confidentiality, so we can't match how many people from the certain postcode go there. So it's 1,416 people from Bradley State? Because Bradley State is in BS32. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how many people yeah. okay, um, are there for at BHOP. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you actually based in Sydney? Mm -hmm. um, the charity or the hospital? 
Yeah. Um, so the hospitals and um, Bristol Oncology and Hematology Centre. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of next to the BRI oh, right. Centre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my charity is kind of across the road, so we're across to the hospital all the time. Okay. Right. Quite a specialist Any questions? Yeah. Um, so they are asking. So they're asking for three hundred and twenty yeah. pounds yeah. 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 Three, yeah. Chairs. Yeah. three chairs. Three chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Three chairs. Yeah. Yeah. So what well, are you allocating three chairs for this group and three chairs for <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry. You mentioned you know, that three chairs. You can chair. put the postcode on the chairs. <laughs> you mm. can do. This one's a BS32. Major chair. Put it for Bradley. BS32. Yeah. 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 You've got a postcode on the back of the chair. <laughs> you can share, I mentioned, as it's uh, being a donation from our side. If you're actually doing that, I would like to put, as a gift from, or not in the front, but in the back or something, BSTC, probably so town council. So it'll be uh, uh, something, a token of our gratitude for the... Uh, cool, yeah, okay. so that the lane? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, chair. Sure. Uh, 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 sorry. It, no, it, <coughs> I think it's being proposed anyway, isn't it? Um, I just like to say it's uh, it's quite nice. This has been really well laid out, actually. It's a really weird out, and um, I, I think uh, you know it's a shame that all these things aren't just automatic, you know, government things, the nice things all the time and everything else. But um, I think people are taking that <coughs> um, from themselves to actually help make these things more comfortable. And you know it's a really well laid out thing, so I'd certainly second. Yeah, I was going to say, again, it's another valuable service that they're doing for the people and their yeah. family, so right. I would recommend for the moment. Okay, so we don't propose Can I just ask another question? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, um, it seems, uh, uh, I'm not used to buying comfortable chairs, but, uh, you know, it's really seems quite a lot, doesn't it? Is there any way that we can help? I don't know whether this would even work, but you know, is it possible for us to do anything to, so that you can get more chairs for that money? Um, well, they're actually chosen by the hospital, um, so they're kind of infection control yeah. chairs. Oh, so they are specially, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. infectious control chairs. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, Tom, <laughs> wash them down, would you, Brian? Brian seconded. Okay, any more questions on that? Uh, no? All those in favour then? But also one so can okay, ask this hospital if they're uh, yeah. taking to this point the budgetary allocation if we can actually better value for money or something mm -hmm. like that. So. Yeah, yeah. so we can give you more. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so ten point four one we have South Philosophy of Hobby. We have a representative yeah. here from the uh, yeah, so uh, South Cross Hockey Club, uh, we're based at uh, the community school, so we play our games there throughout the winter on a Saturday. We currently run uh, three adult men's teams and two adult ladies teams, as well as a mixed team uh, throughout, the, throughout the year as well in various competitions and leagues. Um, we don't have a youth section, and we see that as a massive flaw in, in our club, so it's something that we want and to ensure the future of our club and hockey in the area. Uh -huh. Um, this year, uh, England and Hockey are launching a programme called Hockey Heroes, which is for five to eight year olds. So we're the, well, we are a launch uh, club for that now. Um, so we now need to train up coaches within our club, and also pay for the facilities basically to try and keep the cost down as much for the children as right. possible. Okay, so they're, they're primarily Bradley Stoke children, then, aren't they? Virtually everyone. Oh. 50. All 50. Yeah, all 50. Yeah. Uh, 50 out. Yeah, at this, at this stage, we, we don't have any. So, um, so the programme launches over the summer um, and it will be signed up to, um, similar to a All Stars uh, cricket thing. So, for those of you who are aware of that, so Bradley State Cricket Club have, uh, what is it, 50 to 60 juniors sign up through that scheme. Yeah. But that's mirrored in Winterbourne, in French A, in Downend. But we will be the only hockey heroes club uh, in North Bristol, effectively. Right. Chair, okay. Can yeah. I, because I, I, when I was in childhood, <coughs> I was a hockey player. <laughs> but I, because one of the things which interests me is you're actually initiating for the youth section, and which is really brilliant. Uh, that is a very valuable service so that many children will be more involved in the hockey. I really was accepting that full amount. 
initiate that project. And I know that you're having a wearing a different cricket club in Jersey, but you know, kudos for it. Any, any questions? Um, just a question for me. Um, sorry if it's in here, but um, it, I know Nisa, you're launching it. Um, yep. But have you got an estimate of uh, how successful that launch will be, i.e. you know, take-up rate? Um, I think so you're indicating 50, are you? Right? No, no, that says Bradley State Residence. It doesn't say the take-up is going to be, or unless that's me reading it wrong. Um, so that 50 is an assumption of what we think we might get year one, so that's what we, we're we hoping to get. So Is that because you've got an indication already that people are interested, you know, that number of children are interested? So we're kind of building it off, <laughs> unfortunately, my own knowledge of uh, the All-Stars cricket, which is uh, five to eight-year-olds in cricket um, and, <coughs> and the programme that they run. And as I say, in, in this area, I know that Bradley Stoke have 55 to 60 children. I know Winterbourne have exactly the same. I know French Aid have exactly the same. Down End have 90. They're the biggest in the country. And we are the only hockey club who will be running Hockey Heroes in year one in North Bristol. Oh, so and I think there's only two clubs in Bristol that have been identified. Yeah. Um, and then you're looking at Wooden Bassett and a few other. So are you going to the schools to get more people? Uh, absolutely. So um, <laughs> we've got several teachers. Um, at, at various local schools, so as part of all the trusts who are part of our club, they're actually going to be running a lot of these sessions, so they're going out and they're advertising within their schools too. Oh, can I, are they giving their time up for three in May? They are, yeah. How much is for enrolling? How much is for? I was like, Elaine's next. Yeah. I think that's another good thing that's going to come because it's um, getting children out, it's getting sport, and it's going to be Bradley Stoke is actually launching. Mm -hmm the first hockey team within the North Bristol. And I know for a fact, I know it's, I'm gonna go slightly on the tangent. They did marvellous for the cricket club. Mm -hmm. So again, I think that you're gonna be doing a great job for, for these youths, giving them something to do, as long as they don't play St. Trinians. <laughs> <laughs> a bit dangerous. Um, I would probably recommend giving them the full amount. Yeah. I'd like to propose to give them the full amount. Can I just ask a question? Um, how many girls have you got equal numbers of girls and boys with the cricket and um, no. the, with the hockey, the proposal? Uh, we expect it to come through fairly 50 50. So I think that's where hockey is fairly unique as a sport. Mm -hmm. so yeah. There's not really a differential between the men's and the women's game. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's certainly one of the selling points of it. Uh, within the club itself, our ladies section is much younger than our men's section, but it's probably as big as at the moment. So although we only have two ladies uh, league teams at the moment, we probably have as many ladies members as we do. Um, so you expect uh, to get equal number we expect of girls that to be interested? interested. Yeah, uh, we suspect it may actually go more in favour of the girls because okay. we're going to be competing with football, which is okay. going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, <coughs> sport, brilliant. I used to play hockey as well. The thing is, this is Bradley Stoke Town Council, yeah. and you're applying to Bradley Stoke Town Council. Uh, I've got no problem at all about um, the uh, proposal for £500 um, to, to start this out with, because this is a start-up. Yeah. However, um, it's like with South Gloucestershire Council. You've applied for a grant and they've given you that grant. Yeah, but got the math through South Club. Oh, you've applied for it? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you've applied for it. You haven't got that grant yet, or not? Uh, I, I don't think we've received the money, but uh, I think that's because it's we have submitted agreed. all that's the paperwork. Yeah. And, the, and the reality with your title, basically, the South Coast Hockey Club, it basically covers quite a wide area. I think, in, in reality, what will happen is now we, if we're going ahead with this, yeah. um, because you'll probably come back for a grant next year, possibly, I don't know. This is a start but you may not, because yeah, you know, you've know you got these <laughs> subscriptions coming through. Yeah. But I think you will have to um, sort of demonstrate to us, you know, you have got those members, and they are mainly in Bradley Stoke. Because if a lot come from Winterbourne, a lot come from Yate Ye or somewhere else, yeah. then you should be going to those areas as well yeah. for, for oh, those yeah. grants. That's so. right. yeah. Sure. I just want to know how much is it will be the subscription for these young people? Okay, so it's um, for the hockey heroes itself. You have to sign up through England Hockey, so that's thirty two pounds, and then we receive five pounds of that. 
So we've then got to fund £30 an hour hot, uh, pit trial mm -hmm. of £5 per child for so 10 weeks. So how much um, is 32 for the whole <coughs> session or every... So, thir so £32 for England hockey gets a child six weeks of training six and then um, they get t-shirts and hockey sticks and all sorts. So it's very much married to what cricket have done, what tennis have done. Um, and yeah, so we, we get five pounds of that. Yeah. We're also looking to do a an older group, so you'll notice in the paperwork we say up to 11. So mm -hmm. Hockey Heroes covers five to eight, and then uh, internally we're going to do a five to, uh, sorry, an eight to 11 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, um, That's like the primary school job. Yeah, so then we'd be um, probably asking for 40 pounds per child for um, over the season, it would be 20 weeks. So uh, 10 weeks this side of Christmas and 10 weeks um, starting in February. We're trying to cut out the worst weather for the children because we are outside. If you want to attract children, you know, we can actually put a message to the town council. We can actually also, as part of that, as a sport, we can actually also. And uh, Stoke Matters as well. Yeah. We're, we're, that, that we're in Bradley Stoke Matters. Are you we've, ready? We've got that covered, yeah. <coughs> if you send through a link, we can add it onto our website, our yeah. town council website. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah.
There's only three councillors present for that meeting. Could I have a proposal in a second? Then? I'm a chairman. I'll second it. Thank you. All right. All those in favour? One, two, three. All those against? Nobody. All those abstentions for the rest? Is it really? Okay, so that's carried. Five, six. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can you first of all just initial this bit? Because I'm sure I'll have it in. And if you can initial every page at the bottom and sign and the last page, please. I think this is how we kill myself, but there you go. So I've lost sign the last page, haven't I? Do a thumbprint. Thumbprint. Do I miss the page? Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, I'm keen to Right, now we go on to A1, which is 
Good way of activities so the site development. Right, the job specification has now been added onto the construction line website as it's anticipated the cost is over £25,000, so we do have to do that. Over the next four weeks, companies who've registered their interest will then be contacted by the BSTC premises manager to arrange site visits and... Yeah. This, is, this is for the car park, is it? Yep. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. progressing finally yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> right. 8.2 update on provision of leisure equipment on the Jubilee Green. Uh, we now have an extensive, I'm going to say fold a bit, it's actually you know, it's a Tesco, Tesco delivery tray of uh, catalogues and things in relation to this. What we discussed was, uh, I think the best way to progress is to, is it for council when you're going to take it to a park? Maybe now. Uh, um, I think no. it's because there are... Well, we've basically got. Much it is, it's one of those things yeah. we've, we've looked into so extensively. It's almost like we need a, 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 a re-steer on how much you want to do because it could be a, a, a very simple level uh, fitness area. But the more we've done research, the more you've realised there's a whole range of options. So to basically bring back three scales of option, really. I think it was to have to come to this council, this committee, mm -hmm. to actually give a steer on which right. way they would like it to progress, yeah. and then obviously the final decision on costings and yeah. designs would need to go to all council, <coughs> but leisure use and amenities could obviously have an input into... So what are the options you on this, if there's options? Well, it's, it's, it's about cost and how much work we actually do. One option, for example, would actually possibly involve putting in um, a significant surface uh, and whether that is what we, you know, what you want to do in terms of Jubilee well, Green. I think in terms of a steer, so when we've been talking about this through, it's probably probably coming up to two plus years now, yeah. isn't it? When it started, it was literally putting some pieces of, of equipment. equipment onto yeah, grass yeah. Mm. over there. Yeah. But there is so much more stuff available than was available. So, that's, that's, not, that's not a bad thing because one of the things we tried to tackle or come at an angle with was we didn't want to be in a situation where we're putting in more equipment that was exclusively for people under the age of 18 and children basically. Mm. It wanted to be a full breadth of the community to say this isn't a youth yeah. thing, yeah. this is something that everybody could use, somebody yeah. in later life, somebody in early life, somebody yeah. in midlife. So to me that's the steer, it's like what do we get that enables that to be delivered. If that's something that is X number of pounds, and it's X number of pounds, we need to, we need to figure out those options. And yeah, so having a surface, if it, if it is a surface because it makes it accessible to more people, mm -hmm. brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but it's those type of things I think need to be addressed by that steer. It's like, I thought it was a project to be for as many people of the community as possible. We don't know what that looks like go away and provide it. So if it is provided with services, different types of low maintenance equipment, then that's what it ends up being like. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be very hard to like, prejudge what that would look like by saying, I don't want a surface, or we don't want a well, surface. Well, that's why I'd suggest yeah. that you go for like, different so scales of option. I know, but I think one. it's like, we yeah. really that should... That is a significant it's surface a area. On a, like a broad okay. I've got a question. concept. I went down to Portis Head the other day and they've done this and they've got right there where they're on Portis Head Seafront they've got pieces like this which are like sit-up benches and things like that right. so they've got that on tarmac but then also they've got like multi-use ones within the park area itself as well right. they seem to have put an awful lot of it in but it's not <coughs> necessarily expensive moving type equipment it's sit-up benches it's yeah, well, that, that's, it yeah. has changed it yeah. has been a moving feast and over the past since I've been looking at it, it's the whole I'll put it out, calisthenics, is that the word? There's sort of yeah. fixed equipment that, A, we want to be, some of it at least, DDA accessible, which some of it can be. So the surfacing and things like that seems to be quite important to me. Um, and B, something that is um, not constantly going to need repair and maintenance. And I think some of the sort of indoor gyms outside 
ones, from what I'm hearing from manufacturers, are the ones that often need fairly frequent maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's all so, yeah, yeah, predominantly the feast. Yeah, so they probably have about it's 20 It's sort of been a bit of a moving feast, really. Whilst we're, yeah, it's gone on for a long time, but in terms of looking at it, there's other stuff that seems to be becoming well, available. With you all looking around, then, considering you've come back to us to think about things like surfaces, did you have ballpark figures as to what <coughs> we should be spending? Well, you can go everything, anything from like 10,000 to 30,000, that's what I'm saying. If you're talking about something for the whole lot. That's, that's what I'm proposing, as I say, here's an example yeah. of a scheme costing this much. Here's an example of a scheme costing this much. Here's an example of a scheme costing this much. And then right. you say, yeah. let's but, pursue. Well, <laughs> yeah, can we have a picture of what we want? Yeah, because that's the end point about the ages as well, yeah. because certainly that, although it looks great, doesn't it? That was just no. an example, there's yeah, about course. 20 different yeah. variations. Of course, of absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, if, but it's not going to do with what you're saying, is it, about it across the, the thing? So it is important to see what would you get for each of those multi yeah, of exactly. pounds. Exactly, we need to see yeah. pictures of what oh, they yeah. look like. Yeah. And how we've much got, got, we've, but we've there got are pictures. literally hundreds of pictures that you could have. Yeah, well, so we just want right. guidance I mean, on. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I, like, I, 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 I sort three of know four or five what, yeah. different sort of options. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, and show us yeah. the yeah. 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 But if, 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 I don't think it's possible. Is it possible to have something that covers? Because if you've got something suitable for a five-year-old, it's not going to be suitable for a fifteen-year-old. No. It's very unlikely no, that you'll yeah, find no, something. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no, I don't so think that, the that issue well was going to be the same. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I don't think it's, no, it's not meant to be play equipment. It's meant no. to be out, so it is for adults. You know, yeah. exercising. So that, that, that age group is well catered for across the entire yeah. town. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a case of stepping back from that and thinking it's about what are we niche. not catering right. for. Mm -hmm. So we've done it really well with like uh, Brian and others <coughs> at the skate park that have really pushed that forward. Um, but it was thinking about something a bit different. Because yeah. previously when the um, exercise bikes and things were there, there were a lot of five-year-olds, six-year-olds trying to do it because they didn't have a lot of alternatives, so there will be really young kids trying to use that equipment. So but that but that's why I'm saying I think reach. it's okay. possibly better to move away from yeah. Yeah. indoor gym equipment, yeah. mm -hmm. outdoor yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things that are bar, bars, yeah. 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 things like that. Mm -hmm. You can pull yourself, say you're using your own body yeah. weight, basically, as a means of exercise. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm really pleased this has come back to the table because Mm. I must admit, <clears throat> going back a long time ago, well before we even looked at doing anything with the skate park, um, well before I was mayor, I'd come back about 10 years ago, um, I'd come back from Brazil all excited about <clears throat> what they were doing over there in condominiums, um, which were quite big areas, like Bradley Stoke, although they're gated, so it could be quite as big as the housing development here. Uh, and they had wooded areas, um, just like we've got the Savage's Word, uh, quite beautiful, but running tracks and lots and lots of equipment. Some not particularly massively well manufactured, um, but they were there. And I just felt that we really needed to do something like that for people in our area and exercise, etc. And then over the years, it became uh, obvious that some uh, councils were managing to get quite big grants for these things. So a lot of the equipment was actually literally being paid for. Uh, I think it was Ports Council or whatever. And um, I was hoping that we would have been able to run out a couple of these every year, and by now we've had, had quite a lot, um, to actually get a scheme on. And I think Ben um, actually, and I saw Glint in his eye earlier when he was talking about this, he, he seemed to be quite enthusiastic. Yeah, we need to see um, some stuff. I think it needs to be ambitious, to be quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, you know, just a little bit here, a little bit there yeah. uh, isn't going to really work, and I think. With the amount of project handling um, that our youth leader here actually it's provided with the skate park, well. I, I think you really need to, to, no, to bring something on and show us. And, and cross wise, obviously, you know, there's always going to be a thing you might have to step right. back from it, but I think bring something on ambitious oh, so you can actually look at it that yeah. can be used yeah. on a regular that, basis. That was my feeling, is that yeah. <laughs> the more you look at it, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought something more ambitious would be more applicable. 
to the community and be something more ambitious would be more likely to actually attract external funding yeah. <laughs> you know? well, yeah whereas I think if it's another six bits of indoor gym equipment outside on a not a very suitable surface a it's limited in terms of who will be able to use it b yeah. it will probably need repair and maintenance within a short period of time and you know yeah. it's well, assurance just said we haven't got a specific budget for that and we were turned down by the lottery uh, for um, funds for this yeah that so was, we, that we have to do yeah we have that to do sort that of was, have to be sensible about this what, what what about it was yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah we need to see pictures um, yeah, you know, four or five different yeah. suggestions, yeah. and then I mean, you know, how we much it costs. We were turned down by basically. the fact the line that we went down was the, was the, the sort of obesity healthy option, yeah. Yeah. and unfortunately, there according to the national lottery, there wasn't a big kind of obesity problem in Bradley Stoke, according to NHS, and that's why we didn't get grant funding. Well, that goes down. The so there's loads of other routes, and Graham's very good at applying <laughs> grant funding. So I think yeah. that. Well, I don't disagree with like, going external funding, but I do think there is the provision and scope for us to fund some things ourselves. Mm. And we do have well, the budgets within you to be able to enable us to do it. It's not, it's not you. Used. It's going to no. be for adults. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Kerr, um, <coughs> so, so explaining this now, this, this will be predominantly here. It's not going to be spread around the ground, ground state. It's no, going to be yeah. one specific area uh, right. here. Okay. I, so I'm really that's happy. That's a starting point. So we'll let Graham get on with it. Yeah, some pictures come back to us. Uh, Can I just pick up on what yeah. Ben was saying though? I, I do think the usual thing of having some pump priming funding is always useful for attracting external funding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all yeah. I'd say as an observation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Whether yeah. that could, well, I mean, that could potentially back, be for. That could go back to full council then. Yeah. For yeah. once you, this committee has agreed on. Member funding yeah, yeah. or whatever it may be. We could then go back to full council. We were looking at about 15 grand last time and it was declined, if I remember rightly. It was 9,970 9, something or other. Sure. The actual cost of, but that was very basic, just. Sure yeah, that's quite like reasonable that. yeah. compared to the children's playground costs, you know, for those. Uh, I think a lot of fixed stuff has actually got cheaper, and that's the one yeah. plus side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't go for the complicated stuff, as Graham has said, and yeah. that was just but on it's grass, often, that this, was on grass. One of the options, yeah. to, I know we're not going there now, but one of the options I think is quite attractive is to say you have like a, a large circular area, which is the footprint, which is the uh, which is the, 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 the base you need to put in there. You've got almost like one large piece of fixed equipment which has lots of exercise, body resistance exercise spaces. And you have a range of like markings and things that are there for different workouts. So a lot of it's like you've got like a 50 metre track almost right around the outside of the marked out area. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's a quite an attractive Ooh. looking space for lots of people to be doing things at the same time. Right, so can we leave you to sort of uh, come up with some options on that? Yeah. Costing uh, with, with photographs of what is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks to go yeah. over in yeah. that corner or to be yeah. spread we out. Do want to say the ballpark figure, what we want to be guided right. in, a guidance figure? See, so I know how much equipment it costs, I don't know how much the ground so is in for it. So I oh, that's a figure I was thinking of, if you say 15 was very basic. And I know um, you, let's say around the 20 to see what that's we can come up with that's on that. But that money there. can be reallocated. And yeah. But there is, there, is a, there is play area. Yeah. There is, but I, I think, considering some of the discussions we had in committees last year, and how we were mm. funding and allocating and redistributing money, I think we could... Yeah. Oh, Terry's got a point. I was just going to ask about the um, what's the driver for this. You know, is there some is there some data that says that this is something that people are looking for? I don't the think community? there's any data, but it's we know yeah, it's a No, from years ago when we did the um, consultation, public consultation about um, yeah. the yeah. Brookway Activity Centre site. Some of the things that people were saying that they'd actually like some outdoor equipment that adult members of the community could use. For older, older children, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it would be youth. Sorry, it would be children. No, it's not youth. adults. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I thought you said older children. Yeah. 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 I thought you said older children. 
Yeah. 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 When this originally yeah. came up, we did yeah. 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 we did have a survey, yeah. um, and there's quite a lot of people entered the survey. So I can remember going down and standing with a few of the councillors down at and down at the Woodbrook, and we filled in lots and lots of forms, and it was quite an excitement because it was a, a, a an immense amount of different types of equipment. And it was surprising because it, virtually all of the pieces of equipment down there, people were really, you know, enthusiastic about getting. But at that was at a point when we were looking at putting them down, walkways, etc. You know, where people would just be normally exercise running everywhere, and not necessarily here. So I think this this is a slightly different concept, uh, which uh, Graham's come up with. Yeah. Okay. So then. did you say? Did yeah. you want to set that figure? Yeah, I would say like 20 grand if, if everyone's happy with that sort of level, I'm around that level. The I mean, options are very limited by 20 grand, put it that way. I think, I think <laughs> Graham has already given us indication that uh, something, something in the region of 30. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. Graham's got a number of options. Yeah. 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 That we're looking for a project, he's going to come in with a, some design costs, yeah, and then he's going to go out looking for trying, trying to get some extra cash coming in, yeah. I think, to yeah. it. So, yeah. but if, if you've got between well, well, so 20 and 30, then, and if, so you see what you can come up with on that. See, the, the unknown mm -hmm. in my mind is, is the, the cost of the groundworks. So, I think if you said, you know, approximately 20,000 on the equipment plus groundworks, you know, it's you enough to you to decide whether. Because yeah. otherwise, the whole thing is if you want to make it accessible. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you want to make yeah. it accessible, let's, let's do, do, do part and yeah. these connections. Yeah. And, right. I'm getting, and obviously I wasn't involved in the previous discussion about this, but I'm getting the impression that it was quite a number of years since that, um, since those people made mm. that. Mm. Yeah. Did yeah. you know yeah. that yeah. they wanted I mean, I think, I think Andy will tell you. Spending... I think Andy will tell you from what he's seen down in other areas, and he's taken some photographs. People. People really do use this stuff, right. so I think it's uh, you know, kind of a lifestyle option in many yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them use them in fjords, I've seen them use them up in um, La Borway. Well, I was quite impressed down at Port Design. Literally, mm -hmm. they had it at OK Celsius, of course, but it was right away on the seafront, and people were integrating into their run, they were stopping, they were using the equipment, and in a very similar way to what Graham suggested, they had a central area which was fenced round which had central equipment and there was running space around it and everything as well. And it was incredibly well used. Mm -hmm. Well, the one in Sabanga was actually up in a hill. Yeah. And people was like, when they were running, and there was jumping mm -hmm. up and well, down. I think if we're sure that it's going to be a big take-up, then I think that's... Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. It's just that little money they're going to spend. You yeah. need to be sure yeah. that yeah. it's going to be so well used. Well, 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 yeah. So what we're doing is proposing the twenty thousand pounds for equipment, yeah, and then, and then the surface is going to be looked at, whatever you know, the yeah, whatever the cost is for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So or twenty thousand for yeah. that sort of. Right. Know, what, if, it, if it's an exploratory report, yeah. What about just saying there's there's three figures, there's the low, medium, and high, yeah. and then for that we have an assessment of the options with and without groundworks at those costing points. And then there's potentially three to six options put before this committee again. Yeah. And we can have a little look at it and we can get an idea of the type of thing that we can get for our money and whether we want to invest that much money or we go less. Yeah. I think it's too many options. I think... No, uh, no I think... I think I some of the options are fine, but I think... I think it's good well, idea, my idea of six yeah. is, so yeah, you have three price that. points, yeah. and you said, let's say for argument's sake, it was 20, um, 30, 50. Yeah. And you produced three options with just equipment only, no groundworks, then it was three options with the equipment, then with groundworks. And you can kind of get an idea and a feel of what you'd get for your money and what so we're trying to... Each option separate, yeah. yeah. And then we can get a, a thinking of what we want, and then it can go forward to... It'll go to four and a half yeah. 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 Five, yeah. Five, yeah. five yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Five yeah. 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 that makes sense. Do you propose that? Yeah, I propose that. Price though, so with the lower right. the lower end of the spectrum. Yeah. So we need to write that carefully. Let's say twenty five. From the st stuff I'm looking at, I would say for the equipment starting point. The so equipment it would be ten to twenty five thirty k plus groundworks. Ten to twenty five. Ten to twenty five. Okay, so let's say the starting the bottom end have been fifteen. Mm -hmm. Then the middle end being 20. 25, and then the top end 35. being 40. Plus. 
or a substantial amount of that. Plus the groundworks. And well, yeah. and then, but then mm. taking those costs, those mm. prices, and yes. using them to buy equipment, then that's groundworks, not breaching those units. That's a good. That's a good way. To sort of I don't know. Forty grand is quite significant, isn't it? It is, yeah. but it's yeah. it's it's there to you, show you. You've got your extra extra measure you to the means of yeah. 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 finance. I'll remember. <laughs> oh, well, I'm spending spend money like it's going to cost him. So we're not going to decide what he can spend there. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good spectrum. Now, if you're talking you about 40,000 for equipment plus groundworks, how many? No, 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 that's confusing now. Because the brain works. Better spend. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of uh, two days of extremely hard work over the festival uh, weekend in terms of our youth work contribution uh, on the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, I know some of you uh, came across and, and said hello, and I, Tom, like you mentioned earlier, came just in time for the rain, but I don't blame you for that, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I brought it. I brought it. <laughs> Up, but uh, yeah, it, 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 from my point of view, uh, it was again a very. This is a repetition of the format we've been using over the last four or five festivals, and that's um, uh, very, very popular. It's, it's very visual. I think um, a lot of people uh, are very complimentary. Um, so that's the Saturday there. So that's some of the. What, what we produced on the Saturday was about 70, 70 of those name boards. We also progressed the big piece that you see uh, three down on the right there on the front page. Um, very positive feedback. I think our charity bucket donated quite a lot from there's charity as well. I think one, one seventh of the total fund take for the Mayor's charity come from our bucket. And they were still, queuing, the they were still <laughs> queuing to do graffiti art at six o'clock, weren't and they? We were <laughs> actually working until six o'clock and we had to, uh, you literally had to like go, you, 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 you're in. <laughs> Shut the gate, sorry. <laughs> so is that something that can happen just not once every year? Or is that something it is something, it's it's something, annual thing, isn't it? it's, well, it's something that I know Sarah and I are putting back on the, Hopefully taken off the back burner, aren't they? in terms of Hutley Way, we have plans. Um, well, not that I've been nagging for quite a long time, but yes, we would love to. Yeah, so that, um, that could be a blank canvas of uh, currently mindless tagging and become actually a really nice piece. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The two pieces we had at the, the skate park, but they've actually become wind damaged or skateboard damaged mm. at the skate park. They would, uh, a couple of years ago, and they've lasted really well. And that they were like, basically two eight panel walls, which were very, very. And that was a very. It was working actually with these two guys. These um, they're very. It goes to show that um, you know, if you're a fine artist, uh, one of them I found out the other day has actually got that stuff in the Saatchi Gallery as a fine artist oil painter. But he's um, you know, he obviously don't make a lot of money as a. <laughs> As an artist, it actually become super. How much they actually charge to do artists? Uh, I've paid that. I'm paying them. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's about two hundred and seventy each for the day, which I think is remarkable because they were with me from ten o'clock till six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Have you got their contact details? I have. Yeah. Um, and they were at the end of the day. They didn't know we're done. We're walking off. They we were meant to finish at five. We finished at six. And then after six, they were still helping still me. Helping tidy they up were helping me carry yeah. stuff yeah. backwards and forwards from over there to the yeah, office. So you know, they they're really good yeah. people to work. And the thing about um, you know, because I've often used youth arts as a tool to work with young people, and you can get people who are very good artists, but they're absolutely rubbish at working with young people. And these two are like the perfect combination. They're actually really good at working with young people. Like they're very good artists. Mm -hmm. And they spent a lot um. of having stood there, <laughs> having stood there and watched them with the young people doing their art. They really were involved in what they were doing. They weren't just like, yeah, put that there. They actually were talking yeah. to them and were interacting with all the young people. That's you want these back their interest, isn't it? Yeah. It's really if you could, please, yeah. 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 When they're doing that sort of thing, that's they're genuinely, genuinely yes. right. Got that passion for it. Right, come on then, Graham, quick um, And this. alongside that was the skate half pipes. We had pro rider demos. Lots of young people were there. Lots of. Because um, the reason we put this in in the first place, sorry for the, the councillors who, who are new here, is when we were redeveloping the new skate park and we thought it would be good to bring skate park activity to the main festival site. A, for wider consultation, but also to break down sort of intergenerational yeah. preconceptions of yeah. what a skate park is and what it could be, you know, and that sort of helped a lot, Brian, didn't it, in terms of that sort of phase in that process. And it's something we've continued. So we pick up the half pipe on Saturday evening and then we move it on the other side 
to create extra capacity at the skate park for the Sunday. Um, and you sort of, from my, the panoramic shots, they didn't uh, turn out quite because I'm running around doing competition admin because everyone turns up at the last minute with entry forms. <laughs> Um, so you have like an hour of like admin mayhem organising children and young people into different categories, <laughs> different events, run, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there was, I did a brief head count and I think um, I, people, when they st it started raining already Tom, hadn't it, when you arrived? But I think there was probably at one point there was two, at least 250 people there. Yeah, when they um, uh, yeah, because it sort of captures it, but you sort of you don't see the whole pockets, quite dense pockets of people around. Um, and it's great because you get in a lot of the parents and the carers and the younger siblings, and that's why on the Sunday we have the circus skills as well, which everyone thought it was a bit of a weird combo, uh, particularly when we first booked it a few years ago. But it works really well. Um, that's got some good feedback. So <laughs> that's that's nice. really mm. Yeah. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah, okay, so, so that's that, sorry. We're through that then. Um, so lots of regular sessions, skate park, hardcore sat here, girls project sessions uh, going well. We've got some new girls coming to, uh, to the sessions. A bit quieter from the older ones because a lot of them are doing their GCSEs and stuff at the moment. So they've got a lot of pressure. Um, some of the key stuff that's been happening, you've probably heard through some of the local social media chains, uh, there was a brief spike in anti-social behaviour. I'm sure Sarah has an opinion on it as well. But I would like to think, uh, I don't know what you would say, but from talking with the police, talking with the leisure centre, talking with other people in the community, that seems to have quietened down significantly over the last four weeks and I'd like to think that was through uh, effective youth work, um, some police work uh, and uh, yeah basically working together a bit uh, and identifying who the key culprits were and uh, um, working with them in a positive way to uh, desist from certain antisocial behaviours. Um, some of those young people, without going into detail, were Tom young supporters. Were <laughs> <laughs> you need some context for this. Top <laughs> supporter, Arsenal supporter. <laughs> um, Rugby supporter. <laughs> But uh, I, uh, one of the things that has come out of it is uh, there's a bit of a, we had, um, as the town council, we had meetings with uh, the local police, South Gloss Antisocial uh, uh, Team and the South Gloss Police Antisocial Behaviour Officer. And that was quite interesting because it does contextualise stuff and it contextualised the fact that Bradley Stoke as an area has fairly low levels of antisocial behaviour. But... I was concerned myself that there'd been a bit of a spike and that we could collectively you know, see how we could, by talking with each other in a more coordinated way, address that. Uh, interestingly, the police ASB officer actually said it's not just about the base level, it's also about if, if the community perceive there is a sudden spike. That's actually what they're interested in, as well as a high level or a low level, but if there is a spike. So that was a positive... A positive thing. Uh, parallel to this, the, 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 uh, the local police had also talked with the school and uh, we've uh, attended since another multi-agency meeting and out of that multi-agency meeting we're trying to have a bit of a coordinated um, campaign and approach around antisocial behaviour and risk-taking behaviours of children and young people within the community. And there's going to possibly be some sort of event at the uh, leisure centre in the next few weeks. Uh, and, um, yeah, so, so that's the idea. And, and I think it, yeah, it is very easy for us all to operate in our own sort of professional silos. But I think what often leads to more effective working, particularly working around challenges within communities, if people are mm. working in a more coordinated and... Uh, 
cooperative approach. So hopefully that's going to happen. And I, I, I personally believe it shouldn't just be about dealing with problems. It should be dealing proactively with how we can work together in a positive way. Sorry. Um, with this antisocial behaviour, have you um, been doing outreach work where you go outside in groups and talk to young people like in the evening? That's our main form of delivery okay. ever since I've been here is very much, very little, apart from the girls project, which was meant to be a counterbalance to the emphasis of detached in street work, which was primarily working with boys and young men. Yeah. Um, that's what I think has been really useful because it's given us over the sort of five years I've been here quite a, like, a wide reach. So we now know uh, quite a lot of young people from different groups, yeah. whereas sometimes if your focus is primarily on, um, don't, don't get me wrong, yeah. if it, uh, I think centre-based youth work is absolutely vital, but if it shouldn't be the only approach within a, no, within a community. The, the overlap between this area and say like Patchway, that there's completely different youth isn't there in Patchway and Bradley Stoke and they do interact. So, um, no, move, yeah, the skate park is a reflection of that in terms of, uh, you get, yes, you get uh, the, the major usages from young people from Bradley Stowe, but you get young people from uh, lots of areas, including Patchway, yeah. I do have another question about the holiday periods and whether, um, because there is that, um, the community school holds the um, those free sessions, don't they, to keep some of the children engaged, um, but I was going to ask if you're um, like the possibility of having more things in holiday periods which will keep them more occupied so that they're not engaging in We, other we unlike certain other organisations, uh, we do carry on working with young people in holiday periods. The only thing that we didn't do initially was on the girls project, but we actually do uh, often additional on-site activities during holiday periods. Okay. There's only something like, I think if you look at the last few years of delivery periods, I think there's only, uh, I take a two week holiday, often in the summer, because my partner works in the school, so there's two weeks when I'm away. Uh, but we also have a break usually at Christmas as well as two weeks, but we usually do activities at the start of the Christmas holidays. But apart from that, I'm delivering sessions every week of the year. And when we actually get some more staff, we will be, yeah. <laughs> we will be you know, like doing this, because I thought there's new, new people actually totted up. There's the core activity, the delivery sessions, but the amount of additional ones. In total, during this two-month reporting period, I think we delivered approximately 50 sessions. And we're not talking short sessions, we're talking sessions that are two hours to two and a half hour long sessions. Okay. Um, and I think one of the benefits is because I'm based next door, increasingly now I'm getting, uh, and I'm sure will testify at this, we get... Young people coming into the office, which is <laughs> 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 no, no, that is good, because a few years ago they wouldn't have come anywhere near us. Now they actually yeah. come in and say he's grand in, which is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant. that's what yeah. yeah. So there's the core session. It's grand coming out to play, yeah. <laughs> 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 there's, even, there's even things like, you get, you know, I don't know. Says yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the hated moped riders and all the rest of it, and they might park up, and then they'll one of them will say, "Well, can we borrow a football?" Uh, and I say, "Yeah." I said, "It's very easy for you not to return it. You know, it's it doesn't. You know, but I'm giving you the ball on the basis that I'm trusting you that you will return it. Right. Just kick it back into the court. Ninety-five percent of the time, it comes back. Um, and that that I think that." Those sort of things, are, although they're not all isolated, they're really important in terms of, particularly in terms of this course I've just done, those positive interactions are really important in how they react to people within the community and to the council and all that. You know, like, it was a few years ago, when you might remember this, uh, Brian, when they, we had some young people in there referring to our council. They stopped referring to the council, thinking the council is South Gloss and the town council, and they're all this one monolithic thing. And they started to refer to our council. I think, I think a lot of the councils were, really, <laughs> the councils were really fortunate to get involved uh, when we had all those youngsters coming in with the skate park, because there was quite a few meetings. 
and everybody would introduce themselves, and then he'd come up with all these fantastic ideas, and you took them on trips, and it was just amazing. It was just a f mm -hmm. they they were really empowered. They were telling us what they wanted, and it was magic. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't it wasn't anything uh, discourageous or it was really nice. Nice, nice, nice well, if, if they think they're being listened to, and like you say about trust, if you invest trust in them, and it works for adults as well, doesn't it? If you invest trust in them, mm. then yeah. 90% 95% of it's you know, repaid. Yeah. 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 Are you still doing hot chocolate? Not in the summer, mm. it's seasonal. Oh, in the summer. <laughs> we, still, we still have all these cold recent nights we've had yeah, to yeah, crack yeah. open the hot chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Right, yeah. okay. Should we. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Community shelter. You probably want to know about the community shelter. That is arriving uh, over there. <laughs> and in the Jubilee. We had to take down the old one because it had wood rot and mm. all the other. Mud rot. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, so the, there's a new one coming in. We waited until after the community festival because we did want to turn part of the play area into. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing object, but it was within budget and was fit for purpose and it's going to be robust. Right. So what is uh, the purpose? What does it, everybody just... Rain shelter. Um, it's a shelter that should actually provide some shelter and hopefully it will have uh, different usage during the day, ranging yeah. from somewhere where people can go and push their buggies if it starts raining during... Uh, to keep out the sun. Huh? Could be used. To keep out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> if it ever comes out. Okay. I'm sorry, where was it? Next one. It's just over mm. here, sort of in the corner, just outside the little moat that runs round. The previous one was inside the moat boundary. This is going to be just outside the moat boundary with a little bridge. We're putting in a little sleeper bridge in keeping with the other ones. Mm. That's okay. Right. <coughs> Any other things on that page? What do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, I finished my 10 day course on the neuroscience of the adolescent brain and passed. We got assessed, so it wasn't, it wasn't just a, it's like a licensed practitioner course and there's an increasing amount of schools now starting to adopt this approach, particularly like SENCOs in schools and stuff. Not a lot in South Gloss at the moment, uh, which is unfortunate because it's a very way, different way of actually looking at challenging behaviour and the strategies you then implement to deal with challenging behaviour. Um, and it's not about excuses, it's about understanding and responding appropriately. Okay, right. <laughs> Impacts on our youth work, hopefully. Yeah, you've, uh, <laughs> you've touched on regular youth work sessions at Skate Park and detached street youth work sessions. Yeah. Girls project. and Young Project, additional youth work session, okay, yeah. you've done Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. and uh, we talked about the antisocial behaviour, uh, we had a good trip to Mojo Active, just up the road in Armandsbury, did some high, that was with our Girls Project, we had a minibus full of uh, uh, teenage girls climbing around in the trees, which was good, because it's nice to see that, you know, you do get some of those girls who say, oh, we don't do sport, but they do lots of stuff, which is physical activity. If it's not traditional sports, they right. are very, very active. Okay. They like sitting around and chatting, don't they, rather than, like, a lot of the time, the girls don't get involved with the physical stuff, because I did a bit of youth work, and they usually like sitting around. Yeah, but it's, uh, we've been on residentials with some of that group, and now they do everything, surfing, you know, that's what they were saying, the climbing, high ropes. I've never actually taken a group where everybody participates in everything until um, that group of girls from Girls Project, who many of them said, we don't do sport. <laughs> right, on the next page, you've got stuffing, research, funding, planning issues, administration training. This new activities you've got, I wasn't aware of that. Um, that looks pretty good, isn't it? They're giving you 10k a year for three years. Yeah. Oh, I've got, um, did you know about that, Roy? No. No. <coughs> no, 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 no. I have reported ad nauseum to. Yes, it has been. Very <laughs> well. Well. You checked back through all my committee reports. So. <laughs> From what I understand, I did. I did hear about it because I think some of the councils, like Little Stoke, were getting really annoyed because they're not getting it. 
They are. Oh, they are getting now, are they? They're part of this same package. package. Yeah. I assume it's the same package. We did, I don't know if you remember, we had a meeting with a little stoke a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. I was so good for them. I, I had to tell some of it because I was at the partnership meetings and I knew about the bid for Stoke Gifford and the fact what they were getting. So this has come from, um, we're now as a Bradley Stoke Town Council member of what's called South Gloss Youth Partnership, which I have so support with it. I mean, with this latest offer, unless we were part of that partnership, we would have been outside of it and wouldn't have actually got any money. So we're in what we're in called what's called Lot One, and that is Bradley Stoke Town Council, uh, an organisation called Face from Filton, um, <coughs> Southern Brooks covering Patchway, um, Crunch Court from Thornbury, um, and I think I've missed someone else. Creative Youth Networks. Uh, Creative Youth Networks, who are delivering at the moment at Little Stoke at Stokes that that session. Uh, and uh, Southern Brooks are the lead organisation for our lot. Mm. But basically, um, yeah, we get £10,000 a year for three years. Uh, and so do all the other partners, apart from Southern Brooks, who get a slightly enhanced amount because they've got the admin and stuff. Okay. Skate park here. I notice you've got plans and costings for additional fixtures, fittings, and. <coughs> What, what sort of... Yeah, That's this on is, the so. full council agenda, that one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're just wondering what it is. Is that uh, sort of a luxury <coughs> divan and... Uh, no, to make yeah, it so disability accessible. <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch Tottenham do it. It's your pleasure. <laughs> if only time permitted. Yeah. Um, no, part, part of it is we... we I'd like to think had the foresight to make the container DDA accessible in that we have um, uh, a disabled toilet in there. Uh -huh. uh, however, the nature of shipping containers and the way they're manufactured means that you can't easily access them. But I think as a council, we obviously want to comply with DDA regulations in terms of access to our resources. Okay. So part of this mm -hmm. is the groundworks outside the container um, and I think I've come, I've met a contractor, on, a possible contractor on site to just pick their brains and they've come out with a very good idea about paving the whole area and just gently raising it up as opposed to ramps and lots of other things and I just think it, you know Tom when you were there all that brown horrible sticky gunge which when it's wet is horrible, when it's dry it blows into the park. Uh, that would be got rid of in that whole area become paved and raised so you could actually roll a wheelchair into the container that would be if mm. all it would make it less obvious as well wouldn't it you know just sort of like yeah. slowly yeah yeah as opposed to person. here is something yeah, for yeah, someone yeah. oh let, there's nothing worse is there than oh we'll get out the ramp yeah exactly or, so, or yeah, that sort idea. of yeah. well, are you putting a pathway for all these people to come out from the car park to reach there well, the pathway itself, we put in a drop curb from the car park, mm -hmm. uh, which I know that went down well with the Nature Conservation Group because of the wheelbarrows and stuff, didn't it? Well, so it was meant to be there in the first place, it just got it sh there. Yeah, it should have been there in the first yeah. place. And it also went down well with the mobility scooters as well. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay. I, I request putting that, I would like to minute that because when I was there, I found it difficult sometimes when I was looking at things so that we, we can actually do that. No, we've, 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 done. we've done it. We put it yeah, in the drop yeah. curve. Yeah. yeah. On that side of the car. So I yeah, coming out of the car park onto the path, we put in a drop curb. So it, that was done about a year ago. Yeah, yeah that's when we did the groundworks for the um, mm. uh, when we did the groundworks for the containers. Yeah, it was done. Yeah. We were coming off the path, to actually going on to the gravel. Yeah, yeah. that side. Okay, yeah, I was talking from this side. The car park. Mm. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, and the other bit is mentioning when we had the containers done, they kit kitted out, it was, they're insulated, got heating, lighting, flooring, all that, but now we need to actually uh, like furnish and equip the containers and we want to do that, um, well the idea is to do it in robust like industrial style with inspiration from all the uh, I don't know if you lot go down behind the M shed cargo one and cargo two in Bristol at mm. all. But there's, there's a lot of very good design ideas which are fairly cheap and sensible, um, which is the idea is that we so 
got no jacuzzi then. <laughs> no jacuzzi. <laughs> no, apart from me possibly thinking of that on the roof. Yeah, that'd be nice. I have to say, I was quite impressed when I went over there. I've not been in there since it all been changed. And it's a huge space now, isn't it? It is a big space, yeah. yeah. But we want it to be three separate spaces but linked, with one being a, like a, a kitchen, more a kitchen where we can do more healthy eating stuff, etc., food and stuff. Um, a project room where we can be doing bike and repairs and mm. art projects, and the other one being more of a chill out space um, for putting away the music. And stuff. Mm. So I spent so asked about recruitment stuff and issues. Uh, uh, I thought we, we were just having two. We just need desperately people. Um, All of a sudden, you know, just got, um, No, no, we've always seen the this. The assimilation the, into uh, the, the, the council. The ten thousand pound here is yeah. for staffing. Yeah, and we've also got. Is that what it said? Yeah, that's it's revenue closed. costs. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean staffing, does it? No, it's, it's revenue, revenue costs. It is for staffing. Yeah. Uh, it could be for anything, couldn't it? Could be for your fixtures and fittings. No, that'd be mm. capital costs. Well, not really. <laughs> well, there no. is in, in, you know, in finance, there is. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a few hundred quid. The agreement with South Wales is, 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 is for revenue costs to fund them, staffing. It's only a three year thing, then, isn't it? And we also have staffing within the core funding. And, you know, what we want to do, the reason we've put in containers and stuff and create like a youth space is that we would like to, if we've got to utilise them, we need, um, you know, back to what you were saying, Nikki, in terms of our approach, what we want is that open at least two or three times a week. We want to up their detached work so we're not yeah. just doing some outside work, but we're working the whole area again more effectively. Yeah, <coughs> but there's no guarantee um, that three year revenue will carry on. And also, you're not going to get like um, you know, a, a member of staff for 10k a year, are you? Well, several, isn't it? Two. You're well, no, we've, we've, we've less likely then. We've yeah. got that fund, yeah. and then we've got the core revenue funding oh, within our own oh, youth what budget. About, yeah. Uh, what about um, volunteering, like the older yeah. youth, mm. the ones that have used the youth services, and um, volunteering for the younger? To be quite honest, Nikki, I've been absolutely dependent on volunteering. You know, those things, various so, people, yeah. with, you know, things like the event on Saturday wouldn't have, and Sunday wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for young people. Because yeah. in terms of Bradley State Town Council, I was the only directly paid member of staff because we haven't got any other youth workers. We had another youth worker from the Girls Project on the Saturday who was doing promotion around the site in terms of that, but I was the only youth worker being paid by Bradley State Town Council yeah. on the Sunday. I had young volunteers, one of you know, some of them are DBS cleared, obviously. But um, there's a limit to the, you know, yeah. when you're working. They want something back. When, when yeah, because you know, one guy was working with me from nine o'clock until six, seven o'clock, two days running. You know, it's just like, you know, that's, they're volunteering and there's like, <laughs> it's, you know. But yes, we we have the, we have the money in place, and that went through strategic planning and stuff. But yeah, the exact recruitment. Strategic planning. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What about this food uh, plan project? Is, is it, does this mean that they're giving you free food? So so no, what, what do you more... tell them then? That these are poor children and starving or something mm. and you need some food or Well no, you uh, <laughs> food share food cloud is like a national project which is about trying to utilise what would be food waste. Um, and gradually the big supermarkets are all coming into it. Um, we've been, um, you, 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 they come out and they interview you to make sure obviously what you're doing is bona fide and you sign a contract in terms of the way you uh, agree to sort of use the project. Is this food um, all passed itself I think? Uh, yeah. A lot of it is past, um, well that's the thing is, we understand, you should know, you're looking 
younger generation like myself, that you know, we used to actually look at things to see if they were off. You're not feeding these people. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> we, we, all that stuff is obviously you couldn't it's sort of do. No. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, if you ask what you've got to avoid. But yeah. I think, um, um, Oh, I think that's a very good training of the to engage with the youngsters and have some food, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 The food drop over at the skate park. Yeah. Well, I often do. That's often the, the additional sort of sessions that I do. If I've, if I've got uh, a net, well, I was going to do one tonight, that's why I've got, I've got stuff. I'm not getting free puss on. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure I want it. Sorry? Because I use those for resources for my sessions when, because a, a lot of, a lot of you, yeah, 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 a lot of youth work stuff. Like if you're doing like healthy smoothies or something like that. If I get a load of apples, um, oranges, apples, bananas, oranges, yeah, fruit and stuff so like that. Previous, you know, um, people. Oh, there's fruit amongst it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, but that, 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 that was the attractive thing about <laughs> Asda is that um, as <laughs> Asda start of doing a lot more sort of fruit and veg, and like it's having positive benefits already in terms of. Some of the, yeah, I've managed to actually, they looked with disdain at sort of green <laughs> smoothies. <laughs> not seen that now. I've got four, four or five girls who are actually like healthy smoothies. They should be out of the middle. They should be out of the middle. It's probably a track smoothie. I don't know what's up for that. It's also, you know, if I, if I sort of if you pick up an extra <laughs> delivery and I haven't got a session planned, then I will we'll drive by the, the skate park and, you know, you just sort of, wander over and you have a chat with a load of people and you I don't feel so guilty giving out pastries at the skate park because they're all burning loads of calories mm -hmm. exercising anyway so, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so from that point of view yeah. I've actually thinking like I don't know if people are familiar with the film Bugsy Malone but yeah. I, I want to get a, mm. a sort of a, a pastry fire so mm -hmm. I can just try it and <laughs> 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 So when I haven't got time to actually do a... It's not once you break your teeth on the But yeah, but even, even the discussions about best before and use by and, you know, what does it look like, mm. you know, all and that sort of... like nuts and seeds and all that sort of thing as well, because that's yeah, yeah. a significant thing. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, yeah. If it goes green, you know it's off. <laughs> it's fresh as a daisy and contain nuts, could we? So, uh, well, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it is a. Um, like, well, I went to the launch at Asda. We were invited up there. I was saying to the previous meeting, and it was quite strange because they. I, I said, "Why are we being picked for this?" And they said, "Oh, because of your high compliance." And I was thinking, high compliance. I'm not usually accused of that, but um, it was. <laughs> It was because whenever they offer food, I always respond either positively or so it helps with the whole process. If you just, you know, because you, you're getting texts at eight o'clock at night when you're not at work and stuff, and you say Y1 or N1 or during the day from Asda. And if you respond quickly, then they can offer it elsewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it goes yeah, down. So no waste. You have your yeah. selection mm -hmm. days and you can. And you're sort of engaging with the scheme as opposed to occasionally turning up. So I think yeah. it sort of helps with how that. Okay, let's move on to the mugger then. The mugger. Um, what are you going to tell us about that? Then? Um, right. Um, back to strategic planning. It was agreed to pursue the idea of a freely accessible mugger with the intention being, if you go back to strategic planning before the last, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, and the idea was to convert the end hard court here so it could be accessed independently, um, uh, fenced off, accessed independently externally, but when we had our normal block bookings of netball, etc., the exterior gate could be shut and it could be internally accessed by, say, the netball league or whatever, if they're using the whole thing. Um, what we then found out, like everything, when you start looking into it in detail, if we divided off 
the second and third ports, we would then break uh, Netball England regulations in terms of runoff space mm. on an existing court. So nothing is straightforward. We thought it was a straightforward project to just fence off, put in a gate, put in another gate, etc. So that would mean if we still wanted to hire to netball organisations, which we obviously would still want to hire to netball organisations, we would need to extend the courts. If we extended the courts by say two metres, uh, that would then involve moving the two floodlights at the end of the courts. So it then started to become a much bigger project. So we looked at it creatively. Uh, and that's when we came up with the idea of possibly utilising the lower car park. Um, because that's only, it's got a gate, it can be closed off when it's not in use. So we were thinking without putting down any line markings, and you do, having worked in the city of Bristol for many years, you get used to using spaces for car parking in some part of the day, and then at other parts of the day, they take on a different life as a play area. Uh, so that was the idea that we put sort of mug sides, you know, the goals in basketballs either side of the car park. So when it is not being used as an overflow car park, we can shut the gate to stop vehicle ingress. And that was what went to full council at the annual town council meeting, the proposed right. design. With costings. With, with costings. They were happy with that? No. They weren't. Right. How no. much were the costings? It wasn't the costing, it was the next line concerns were raised that a potential conflict could be created when the area was in use as a car park during the day. Because if you've got three sides of a Muga in position, yeah. even if the car there, sometimes there are random cars parked in the car park during the day. And mm. so young people or people might go down and use the Muga even when there is a car parked in the car park. It's all right for when the car park's closed because obviously we can close the gate at the yeah, top yeah. to stop cars going down there. But cars do park down there during the day. Yeah. So that was well, the overflow car park, um, how often is that used? Uh, not, you know, for the festival and uh, things like that, fire at night, things like that. No, yeah. probably when we have fire in, it's used quite a lot during the day. Is there? Yeah, like mm. South Cross Council, if they've got uh, oh, governor right, yeah, 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 or yeah, that yeah, sort of stuff yeah. that is used. Yeah. Um, Having said all that, okay. though, uh, the, but that's why it's come back here because obviously right. council. But at the moment, we do we do have a ball wall there, don't we? Yes, we do. Which that in itself, I'm not aware of any. Conflict. No, there is, but that's one small wall, yeah, that's one. as opposed to three sides of yes. a... Yes, uh, I've, I've raised this at council before. I've had to park there when I've come to these meetings. Really? I've had to park my car where youths are playing football uh, and kicking it around the cars and against that wall. I brought that to council mm. uh, I seven that. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, right. so it's not just an issue during the day, it's in the evenings as well. Particularly when you arrive here at 7 o'clock and the netball mm. people are here, you can't actually find a parking mm. space here, so then you're forced. Uh, so if there's no bookings over. in there, it's easy for us to lock the gates at half past four when yeah. the schools but have all gone, and then that car park is free to use. Anyway though, because of all those things, taking on board all those sort of comments, I've suggested um, a course of action and I go, because it's, we sort of seem to be, it's a bit like the other one, because we've obviously been going round on this one, I thought it was important to say, this is where we are now, how do you want to proceed? Um, so, yeah, LA to action, LA committee to decide um, how they want to proceed following a further report, including exploring a fully costed option, so that I'm saying, do, is that what we want? A fully costed option of extending the hard courts, and floodlights, moving them, etc., so that um, we still comply with um, Netball England in terms of runoff and are able to divide the end core and then actually create a freely accessible space, which I'm sure would be used by, um, I don't think just children and young people. I think I could imagine people coming over with little toddlers and stuff coming in there certain times of day and early in the mornings and. So what are the hard courts primarily used for? Is it tennis? Is it netball? Is it what well, out there at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Well, the only thing that we would create a problem with is the netball, 
but that it is very well used yeah, by no, netball organisations. Is that all major, are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As opposed um, to tennis. What's, what's, the, what's the other uses of the... the it's idols? mainly club netball of and an football, evening. Football, football. Yeah, they can yeah. be occasional player, but it's mainly yeah. netball of an evening. Right. So it's club netball during the week, and then they have league matches at the weekend. So right. they are so the, our a, major hire. Yeah, so we can't upset them. We can't upset them. No, no, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they can still yeah. use it. But in fact, they would have... Yeah. As long as the dimensions are right, they would actually have one cord which doesn't have any ball runoff. Do you know what I mean? When it's the, the mugger cord, when they're using it as part of the hired cords, mm -hmm. would actually have a so you can have three matches side by side with that knife. Because that's the thing they play certain league sure. matches. <coughs> I've been to the previous meeting and listened to <coughs> people's concerns. I think this is a very sensible. Uh, suggestion. So I propose that we go ahead with this. Which, which one? Well, one. 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 Yeah, and three. Um, well, it's got to be reported. Yeah, yeah, come yeah, back. You have to come back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do that then. Um, Are there any we got a fully costed option of extend, extending the existing hard courts, which will not in, impact on netball, basically? <coughs> of not having the car park, you know, not having these as a car park. It has to be as a car park. So well, it was put in by South Gloss Council for the, 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 the enclosed car park, was for the, is for the school, because it's used for the school runs, because they've got the entrance off of there, so we can't, yeah, we couldn't shut it off as a car park. No. Okay. Yeah, this is. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was just thinking that, because I know nothing about it, I was yeah. thinking, well, it's a good idea, but, yeah. There's a rectangular piece of tarmac. Right, it's a proposed option one, then. Point one. Uh, does anyone want to uh, second that? Uh, point three. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, bring it back. Of course, can you please that? Who's second there? Right, all, yeah, those, all those in favour? That's the number Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Okie dokie. So, just a few bits to tidy up there. Local, yeah. regional, national network and partnership. Blah, 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 blah. Licensing. Yeah. Training. Oh, that's just that again, in yeah. more detail. Yeah. Okie dokie. And so, right. so you're yeah. going to uh, make that action, I think, to find out. Yes. One, one and three. Sorry. Good stuff. Like uh, one of the questions I have is regarding the Brookway, the half court. So right now, what's the stage? What we can explore that? Too? I no, we can uh, that we, earlier. We the car park, right? So are it clear? Because earlier there was a roof thing that's coming out. No, I said, I said that the job specifications now on the construction line website yeah. anticipated costs over 25,000. Over the next four weeks, companies who've registered their interest will then okay. be contacted by the post. Progressing. Okay, 9.2, Bradley Stubbing Bloom. There's an update plus a request for funding. <laughs> oh, I think Bradley Stubbing Bloom is wilting over there. Yes. <laughs> we have. Can I just say, don't get up at five in the morning and think that you can go through until. Yeah. We hold um, the budget for the Bradley Stubbing Bloom, which is nominal code 3017. £4,236.13. Right. The last time Bradley Stoke in Bloom had any money from us was August 2017. 17. Yeah. Oh, so you want yeah. some more? They'd like yeah. some more, please. Because it's all been ripped out by thugs or something, Well, Graham will be very pleased to tell you that actually the um, Manor Farm roundabout is adults. Oh. Or all the damage on the roundabout is done by adults. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And um, um, the latest lot, um, we've got, there are photographs, but the person has given them to Keith Cranny. He won't give them to me or John or the police. Why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, he marches to his own drum. Mm. I have tried to encourage him to give How me... How come he's got the photos? Um, because he saw them out there at five in the morning. Oh, right. Two five adults. In the morning. Yeah. Um, and the previous theft of them was two adults as well. 
So they're actually stealing plants, basically, is it? Oh, no, they're trampling the plants while trying to steal the heifer right. and the pig. I'm surprised Keith didn't yeah. give them to you, because he's... Sorry? He's being sort of quite brave and outstanding in certain, certain times. I'm sure he... Not, I don't understand why he wouldn't give them to you, would have been... He, he is worried about repercussions. But right. giving the pictures to the police via a Anonymous email is, is the safest way of exactly. doing it rather yeah. than yeah. sending it I'm to Keith Cranny, who I'm isn't even in this. It. I really am shocked. It's not Keith Cranny. You're not talking about Keith Cranny. You're talking about the person that took the photographs, aren't you? The person who took the photographs yeah. have given yeah. them to Keith Cranny. Yes, but the person that took the photographs didn't want to give them to the police. Yes, yes. sorry. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And he would, you know, if he's been some photographs and he did he's something, got a lot of you know, I know he's, you know, he's actually rescued people, um, so he fought off an attack with a knife, because, yeah. um, he's a really good guy and I can't, I wouldn't see him actually looking after his own self like that, he, he's selfless, he's yeah. selfless. Anyway, carry on. I may have a little job for you afterwards. Um, we've been given a list of names for the decoy ducks. And I thought you could all have a little, a little, choose your favourite. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen pairs. Is that the one that went round the schools? Yeah. The yeah, I saw that one. It oh, was... well, I've, I've hidden the children's names so you can't see them. Okay. <laughs> so if one of yours is on there, you can still yeah. vote. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, don't worry, I won't look at the names. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what are we going to do with it? Oh, you've just got to say which you think is your favourite name for oh, yeah. a it's pair of decoy ducks. Or just the one name? A, a, a pair. A pair. It's a shame because I'd like to move some of them around. Mm. But. And we're going to get them a little um, decoy ducks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do you know off the top of your head how many hoops? No, no idea, but yeah, it's picking. Because that's what I said. I said, I'm sure that if they came to town council and said, would you buy some that people would lend out? Right, okay, I will pass that back. Borrow. Yeah. Yeah, to use. So that would be a Yes, I mean, that's idea. I mean, I don't mind lending it out, but it's quite a lot of hassle sometimes. In fact, yeah, just put her in contact with Joseph. Yeah, I will do. Yeah. Is it part of the <laughs> Sorry? Is it part of the... No, no, because the, the um, conservation group has got their own. Um, you go for Harry, then? No, we didn't, actually. Sorry. Well, that's... <laughs> 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 Chair, can I, can I say... No, I don't think there is, actually. No, because he, he's just... He's, no. he's too Chair. excited by his choice, now. What's on the back? No, uh, you can't look on the back. Oh, right. Dippy, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Chair, well, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to say on this um, group, which has got to go around doing some list picking the, 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 this youth work, what I must admit, I found recently, having been involved mm. with something somewhere else, try to take the stuff back to the waste place. Mm. And they will take it as long as it's separated. So in other words, you've only got plastics and things in one yeah. thing. Um, bottles and tins in another. It's got to be separated mm. in the same way, and then and then stuff which is completely unrecyclable mm. in another bag. Mm. So I, I don't know whether you can pass that message back because um, you know because yeah, otherwise okay. it, it will create a problem. But it's still got to go back right up to unless it's someone can actually handle it here. Um, but it's got to go right back up to either Thornbury or they won't yeah. take it a local a local one anyway. So. If you put them in contact with Jason, you'll just get them. Well, do. That's not, not recycle, split up, but get rid of black bags. If it's split up, it's fine, but otherwise... It right, I'll propose <laughs> that Sarah gets a 1,000 and we release that. Well, not, not me, the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you'll, you'll walk out with a... No, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. <laughs> my back pocket. Isn't it? Back pocket. Anyone want a second, that? Yeah. Yeah. Tom, Thomas first there. Thank All those in favour. I promise we'll spend it wisely then. There'll yeah. be no... Right. Sorry, no, I just want to say um, thank you, basically. Yeah, I've got... Uh, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I was just... Oh, right. I've got distracted by his name. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> well, we can't have any money because... <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Nicky. That's unanimous. Uh, Although I have to say, Nicky, according right. to that, you are Tony Griffith. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. You'll get the list, and there'll be one for each one, but no more than one oh, for each God, one. Oh, God, no, don't! <laughs> Sarah, is that the phone Yeah, is that the PC? Brad and Yes, yeah. Because you always ask me for it, so I, I thought I'd stick it in there first. Right, 9.3. Are we going to allow Jimmy Cole's fun fair? You want the Jubilee Green? Right, um, yes, but I'm not happy with the terms because the reality is, Matthew, is we're lucky to have uh, the fairground people down here and I know there was a bit of a sort of change last year in the way that the grants were done um, because part of the money got, went to the Mayor's charity. But the reality is, if you remember the time, the council officers were saying that if you have money coming in, that can go towards... Um, things which are happening here anyway from the point of view of things which are possible. I mean, we're already looking at trying to get some extra equipment or whatever. And so I think on that basis we should not be looking to put money into a charity. The amount of money which we also get them to do, and we had this convoluted thing where um, what we did originally when we brought them in here initially when we did the carnival, where they actually gave a thousand pounds towards the carnival, now it seems to be a thousand pounds up for grant um, for for something else, and you know I don't think that's I don't think that's on. We don't have to pay four hundred pounds towards advertising. You're going to pay advertising money for advertising anyway. Um, and the thing is, if if you've got a situation where you get a downpour for the whole weekend and they're not able to take any money or whatever, I mean, still got to pay all this cash out. I, I really do believe that we should be looking for. Some money for um, towards uh, to, to the Bradley State Town Council uh, for allowing them to, to use the ground, which we then put back into money which we can use uh, on, on, on the thing appropriately, but not actually in a way that this is 
just money for that. And I'm sorry, Tom, but you know, I think I think in reality it's we should have to start it. being something where Tom, money just goes to, 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 to Tom or whoever's that, chair it? to go out to their charity. I think mm -hmm. you know it's Bradley State Town Council, and I think we should be looking to encourage um, the fairground here, um, and hopefully you know it will be there for many years. Um, these these people really truly, um, you know, we're lucky to have them around still. It's not cheap to run a fairground. It really isn't cheap. So you know, I would propose that we would do something different, where we might charge them five hundred pounds to come in, and that could be laid off effectively if they're not able to perform for the for the full so period. Because they might have to call it off. They've got a lot of expenses. Brian, can I just ask you a question? Sorry to interrupt you, but I'm reading it completely wrong then in that case, because I what I'm reading here is that they will be charged a thousand pounds. Yeah, that's what that's what happened last year. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just don't I am happy to have it here, but I don't I don't want us to emulate shit. what we did last year. That's what I'm saying to her. Do you object to that, Tom? No, it's uh, <laughs> let, let me put it let me put it like this. Oh, no. But Anyway, when the fairground is, we are actually giving that facility, they are actually making money. Imagine that they are making money. Are they going to contribute? So it will be a, actually a good thing if you actually, not for the male charity, for the town council, which I agree. It was something around thousand pounds earlier. Well, I mean, officers mm -hmm. are quite happy to accept the whole uh, rental of the Jubilee Green to the figure that you want to, to set. It was just last year, council decided that they would donate the money to a nice charity. But I mean... We but do I, have admin work. I know it doesn't come out to the full value, value but, you know, yes. And uh, for the male charity last year, they benefited from the male, uh, yeah. But, well, I think it will be uh, our buckets, you know, over there as a male charity for these things. May sometimes comes. Other than that, you know, that's my opinion. I don't have a personal investor interest in it. The <laughs> male charity is actually closest for the other community. It's not my thing. Right. Okay. So I suppose that we... Charging five hundred pounds, so effectively they can't do the full three days because of. Well, it's actually four days because it's. Well, four days because back with them. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was we, it's we six hundred. Knock, we knock off a bit of the cash. So, um, I mean, originally it was a thousand, which yeah. was two hundred. That was basically because the, the, the body did. Okay. We brought them in, yeah. and that was to help the carnival. We got yeah. no carnival this year, yeah. and I think what they need to do, and what they did before, and they asked for it, they asked we. Because they said we were, we want to get some extra things in to, to try and get more attractions here so that we can actually encourage more people. I think they had characters. And I think we should leave them. that. You know, I think we should leave that thing to them. Yeah. Andy, can I suggest in that case that can I agree with that? We say five hundred pounds, but we equate that into the four days. So we look at if they can't go one day, that's one hundred twenty-five pounds less. Two days, two hundred fifty pounds less. I think so. Yeah, I think that's great. So it's fair. So you've got something yeah. actually set down. Two so seconds in that, Andy. Yeah, so so, Andy. So, Andy. Sorry, I want yeah. to understand this if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, is it not right then that there's a thousand pounds? Because this figure's been. No, well, that was, no, that, that that was that's an arbitrary okay, figure. Okay. Can I just set the Can history? I just have my head back, please? Yeah. I just want to understand <laughs> yeah. the, the figures. Yeah. So, we're not talking about a thousand pounds. No, the reason it happened is because historically it was tied in with the carnival weekend. But the carnival's kind of grown up and we did things like the last night of comms last year. When we first started dealing with Jimmy, and it was Jimmy himself who suggested the figure that he would donate towards the running costs of the carnival was £1,000. Um, the carnival doesn't always happen, it's kind of like a bi biannual thing now, um, or it's something different, as I say, like it was last year, which was the last night of the proms. So it kind of went across last year, and that's what happened, but it, it wasn't set a precedent. But as Brian said, I think it's a much better yeah. way of doing it and say five hundred pounds. Sure. I'll just say one more thing, for Terry. The reality of the matter is the, the the fair being there was a facility, the carnival was a facility. Both of those things actually work for each other. So in, in other words, the carnival fed um, right. sort of people to to the fairground, and they were actually ha happy to help to fund the carnival because right. we were trying to sort of put that on for a sort of a, a very small amount of money so the two fed each other and the thing is when you're putting on any event like a fairground or whatever it is an activity for people august bank holiday weekend is great because effectively some people from bradley stoke aren't able to go on holiday just like that so the youngsters can enjoy it they can come to the green hopefully it's going to be good weather and it's an event which we get put on for free 
So I don't think we should charge them any more than 500, to be perfectly frank with you. Well, and I, I think the way that Andy is surmised, you know, cemented that is, mm. is a good one. Um, and I think they will be quite, quite pleased by that. What I want to understand is, so in the, in, in the previous years, the fairground has spent, regardless of where the money goes, has mm. spent £1,000 on um, the advertisement, which is like £400, advertising their costs and running the event and trying to make it... It you know, was the, the provision of extra that and had like characters and dressed and up and you know, create that, that event. Stuff. That was four hundred pounds. Then, there's that six, pounds. then there was like six hundred went to mayor's charities, which you proposed and you shouldn't have done at the time. But what I'm trying, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to say it should go to no. charities, but and what I'm trying to understand is, is that the, cha the that that function ultimately is private enterprise. Yeah, it's a business. Yeah. It's a business. Yeah. Um, so. Anybody going onto that green, matter who, who they are, what they are, would come to us for permission and ask to pay a fee, yes. which they're going to do, which we, which we hope, well, hopefully they'll do. But I'm just trying to find the limit of where does, I'm not trying to establish right and wrong with the charities or anything like that. I'm trying to understand where do we draw the limit of it's a private enterprise, therefore they should contribute something. Mm -hmm. I imagine the money they would give us would put the green correct or are they under contract yeah, so to make sure the green is correct? It does yeah. say the, the, the second part this underneath that what was agreed last year is mm. the terms and conditions yeah. that they get along with their booking form and it does say any damage done to the Jubilee Green yeah, will to need to be rectified yeah. by them before yeah. vacating the site and the year when it was really muddy they did and yeah, they actually yeah, they, put, they put they um, put chippings down didn't they or yeah. They, yeah they put something on the entrance way yeah, they actually improved yeah. the entrance yeah. way they for did. us mm -hmm. Well, I, I, actually, I will, I will take issue. I don't think there was anything wrong last year with the way that was done. I think council wanted to do that. They did that. We did it in subsequent years previously to that. Um, there was no, there's nothing wrong with proposing that that money sent to the, a, a mayor's charity fund. Um, it'd be different if it was a mayor's slush fund to spend on whatever they wanted to. We all got our own opinions, Ben. I'm not, my yeah. opinion was it was wrong for you to do it. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, just, I disagree with that. No, but my, my opinion still was, stands on that. Yeah. Well. Um, I would just like to make a point that yeah. in every other walk of life, um, every year, there is a certain increase in costs. Yeah. Whereas in this case, there doesn't seem to be. So that, I would think, is a little bit odd. I'm just from 1,000 to 500, it's gone down. It has gone down, yeah. I'm just making the angle of, I see, I see fund yeah, fairs up yeah, and down not. Gloucestershire in, in, other, in, other, in other places, and they're not necessarily, like in our case, it's a public space. Mm -hmm. They might be running fairgrounds and fun, and fun fairs on privately owned property mm -hmm. that will charge a, a rent for that being there. I just, I'm just trying to strike the balance of where it, it is a private enterprise, it's a business. Mm. Whether it's a struggling business or a, a flourishing business, there is, there is a cost to be had for that. Mm. Um, Chair, it's a village green. <coughs> we invited the fairground people here. Um, <coughs> we got over the hurdles of the fact that another fairground had actually damaged the ground a long time ago. Mm. And there was no way we were going to be able to put it on there. And as mayor, I managed to actually get that through with all the little caveats. And Fairground offered the carnival some money to help them, not from the point of view of getting onto the ground, because that wasn't the situation. Um, that was to actually help with the carnival to get to make it successful. And also, that would then also bring other people in to, okay. to have the, the Fairground here. Um, the amount of money, which I'm suggesting is £500, is no more than well, no less than uh, or more than, than what so Gifford charge for them, which they get a little bit of cash from them. Right. So I'm so going to propose, and I hope everybody's okay. taken on board right. um, that the history of it, and we should not be just looking to to make money out of fairground, which actually brings so much enjoyment to people in Bradley Stoke. Well, the other thing, thing just to point out is, and that is, we have been quite restrictive with their hours, and they've worked yeah. with us very well over the years. We haven't had any issues last year, I don't think, or the year before, the year before that we did. So we restricted their operating hours till half past eight in the evening. So I think... Yeah, they've got the food, food sales after 11 o'clock here. Well, yeah. it actually yeah. says if you read further yeah, down, it restricts yeah, everything restricted, to half past yeah. eight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But they so, do suggest that they are making quite a bit of money out of it, otherwise we wouldn't be um, 
you know, agreeing to those limitations. So. But, but equally, it costs them an awful lot of money to come here as a yeah. benefit to the community. And the thing is, we start doing the carnival in August because mm. the last two August bank holidays, possibly even the last three, mm. were horrendous weather. Absolutely horrendous weather. So I'm not making like excuses for another a business, mm. but yeah. I just think that that's why second to Brian's proposal, I think it's a fair okay. price for a fair return. So, so we got a proposal from Brian, seconded by Andy. Which was, so £500 for the four days, which yeah. equates to £125 per day. Oh, yeah. Any day the fair doesn't run due to the weather will not be charged. Yeah. Yeah, that was My question yeah. is, if we are actually doing that, then why can't we make it? If we are detecting what they're doing, why can't we make it thousand? My question is, as in the fair ground. Yeah. Because we are actually, anyway, giving the community that will be less. Mm -hmm. That's my question. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was a thousand last year. What? I think Brian's, uh, what Brian said was reasonable. We because thought the proposal, yeah. Was, so you vote on that. If yeah. that fails, yeah. then obviously you can come back with a council. Can you it again? So it's five hundred pounds for the four days, yeah. which equates to one hundred and twenty-five pounds per day. Yeah. Any day the fair doesn't run due to the weather will not be charged, mm. which we haven't had in the past. I think that's fair, is because I mean, if it's really pouring down rain, yeah. they're going to be sat out there, and nobody's. But, they're and not well, they, they won't be able to open the fire. five hundred pounds goes where? It comes to the council yeah. and, yeah. and that comes back so that effectively that yeah. comes with funds to the council yeah. and, and then the council goes into their, their, their resources well, and, just, and when we're looking like to do other things like give money to charity yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. so we've got a proposal from Brian seconded by Andy um, yeah, yeah. who's yeah. all those in favour Yeah, yeah, can you abstain? Yeah, can you abstain? That's fine. So that's it for public well, house. Yeah, yeah. Chair, well, I just want to say a few words. The biggest, uh, 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds doesn't make a difference because the cost that for the council is more. Mm. Uh, but you know, as it's a uh, uh, fun fair for the community, I don't want to indulge watch one people. <coughs> but um, directly, people were saying, okay, we should have uh, much more. As a, we want to come up with some of one, we have already a community this year. We should put this one as a spring festival as well, you know, end of the April time yeah. or the April. So that will be, we will be have more activities and we have the fireworks which is coming in the autumn season. So, so oh, we can actually yeah. do something in their growth and then yeah, more strength that will be actually great. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, this is actually the uh, opinion that I received from the community when I was doing it. Uh, next meeting, 19th of August 2019, so Can I just make one plea? Isn't it time that some mayor bought some new planes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are run out from when I bought them. I think we're on the last box. I know we are. We know it's old. Yeah. I know this is well, from 2015 <laughs> 16. This is. <laughs> okay. Well, they've, they've, they have like, well, but They have. They've gone. I've still uh, got my good value for money. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. They've lost too much out of their. I